So all that kind of stuff, that would be, that would be great. Um, it really means a lot. And especially a lot of our children do not have uh, fathers in the home and, uh, and kids that we work with. And uh, we're always looking for kids to want to mentor. All right. Praise the Lord. We want to... Uh, Say, if you didn't get a chance to check out Facebook, the messages are now on Facebook, and feel free to share those. The word is getting out. They're getting a lot of comments from around the world, actually, people checking out messages. Matter of fact, I had our county sheriff uh, uh, say he was listening in, so that was pretty cool. And uh, to, God be the, to God be the glory. And, uh, but if you want to check that out, you can just go to Praise Assembly Facebook, pop right up, and like us, and you'll get everything that's there. And, um, and you can listen to those, those messages. I want to say a big thank you to Tim and Carolyn for working behind the scenes to make that happen. Thank you, Brian. We, uh, we really appreciate uh, that. Well, we're going to go deep into God's Word uh, here this morning. And I pray that everyone here wants to go deep into God's Word. I pray that everyone says, you know, I want more of God. I want a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in my life. And let me just say this, church. And, and as the Sunday night crowd knows, but, but God is moving, and I'm really believing we're very, very close to an awesome, awesome outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe that. I'm looking forward to it. It could very well be in the coming weeks. And this is something that's, that's amazing. God's pouring out His Spirit. Great things happening. We were here last Sunday night, for those that weren't here, we were here over three hours worshiping and praising God. Miss Jen called me up and said, Pastor, is Billy there? I said, yeah, he just left. We got happy tonight, Jim. <laughs> He's on his way home. Don't worry, the kids have been asleep for two hours. They're all set. You know, so, it, I mean, it was, we had a good time last Sunday night. All right? And there's going to be more to come. All right? And bring the kids. Just think of these, these chairs, we'll think about these chairs. They're nice and comfortable. The kids can, the kids, Billy, uh, Billy's two, bye-bye, and uh, who else was going to be they were curled up. They made a big X. I thought they were doing a football play. You had Bible laying this way and Sid laying that way. But they were cozy. They were sleeping away. It's, it's not a problem. I, I went to sleep Sunday nights, and Mom and Dad wake me up at 1 a.m. They would get happy till like 1 a.m. Praising God, all right? So, so it, and tomorrow's a holiday anyway. So kids, kids got Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. So it, it's a holiday. So come on out. And we, we, we never know what God's going to do. But God's moving. And I know he wants to move even more so uh, here uh, this morning. The title of this morning's message is Direct Words from God. Direct Words from God. And actually every week are direct words from God because I preach expository. We get into God's word. We The outline is scripture. We break it down each and every Sunday and Wednesday night or any other time. Um, but these are real direct words from God. These are kind of like when your parents say something like this, I have spoken, and they have that face, that, that expression. I have spoken, which means they mean business. No more warnings, no more I've got time. It means you get up and take the trash out. I have spoken just, if I have to tell you one more time, something's going to jump in me, and it's not going to be the Holy Ghost. So that told me to get to stepping. Okay, well here God is going to speak to us. And he's going to speak with that same firmness, that same boldness. So we really have to take things serious. God is inviting us. We've heard again today. God desires us to chase after him, to come unto him, and to let God just move mightily in our life and to take our strengths and to take our weaknesses and turn it into an amazing testimony that brings glory and honor to God. And this is the type of message that we're going to follow up with King Solomon's life. And we learned last week in last week's message, with a message that was called So Similar Yet So Different, about Solomon and praying for wisdom, God visiting Solomon in, in, uh, in, in 1 Kings chapter 3, and, and, and Solomon asking for wisdom, God grants wisdom, then Solomon had to deal with the issue of paternity with the two women, the two harlots, who had had babies, and we talked about that. And we're going to find here today, church, that after King David died, Solomon started off so well. Solomon, he got out of the gate wonderfully. He had wisdom. He, had, he, he prays a great prayer over the temple that's built for God. And God blesses Solomon mightily, but it's short-lived. We're going to find out today that in just a short few years, King Solomon would, would start to follow in the path of his father David, 
but it would all go down the drain really, really quickly. However, most folks don't know that God had warned Solomon that that would take place. Most folks don't know, perhaps even here today, that God will bless and honor goodness. He'll bless and honor integrity. He'll bless and honor righteousness that we just sang about. And God will do great things. However, church, when it comes to evil, when it comes to flipping the switch, we're going to find where God changes his tune a little bit. If you guys would be so kind as to stand with me for the reading of God's word from 1 Kings chapter 9. Maybe perhaps you remember where 1 Kings is. That's where we were last Sunday morning, just chapter 3. Today we're in chapter 9. Uh, 1 Kings is the first third of the Old Testament, if you're looking for it. If you cannot find it, it's on the screen for you, and Brandon will scroll down through as we go. 1 Kings chapter 9, and we're going to read the first nine verses, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication and you have made that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity and in the heart and of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my commandments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I have consecrated for my name. I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be so a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? And finally, verse 9, Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And may you see We're going to get serious with God today. We're going to evaluate the life of King Solomon a little bit further. Now a lot of people don't realize that Solomon started out so well. God had blessed and then he gets wrapped. You continue reading just the next few chapters. He gets wrapped up with the women and it's all downhill from there. But church in just a split second... Just a split second, just, just this one little TV show, just this one little website, just this one little book that I read, just this one little song. If we're not careful, we can fall just as fast Amen. as King Solomon. And God's ready to move mightily. He, church, he, does he see something in us that's chasing after holiness, chasing after God as, 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 as Jonathan did, Saul's son? Chasing daylight, chased after God. King David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, 2 Samuel 13 tells us. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing and wonderful. But if we're not careful, if we compromise, things can happen really quickly. That's why Paul writes, give no hint to evil. Give not even the appearance of it. Because all it takes is a snap of a finger. And things can crumble fast. I've worked and known many ministers that's happened to. Where they were great and it was just one moment of vulnerability and they fell. One moment of, of temptation. 
that got them and they fell fast and fell hard. Many Christians, church, falling away left and right. And it's happening quickly. I've, I've counseled so many and they say something like this. Pastor, it happened so fast. What happened? One moment I was, I felt, I felt God. I felt his hands on my shoulders. I was worshiping him. I was close to God. But it was literally the, the next hour, the next moment that it, it just seemed to wash away. What happened? Church, what happened was someone thought they could have a little treat. A little treat. Enjoy the world just a little bit. And it was over. I remember when Mary and I, we, 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 we re rebuilt our bathroom in 2007. Our bathroom was in terrible shape and we, we had it rebuilt. And it was nice when we had a new tub and new plumbing put in where if, if, if you wanted to take a bath, you could just push the button down and the water drain out like that. The old tub, we never took a bath. It was always a shower. Okay, we were clean, don't get me wrong, but, but uh, it, because it would take literally an hour or two just for the water to drain out. Oh, it was a long time, okay, but it was great when, when, when you just flip that little thing down, but now you see it, now you go, wow, this is pretty cool, wow, good indoor plumbing, wow, that's amazing, okay, but, but church, it was amazing how fast that water could go out. It's just like that, it's just like that closeness with God, it can separate so quickly if we're not careful. And Solomon is a prime example of this. Solomon is a prime, prime example. Because King Solomon, remember, please remember last week's message where he asked for wisdom after his father died, after he was installed as king of Israel, the third king of Israel. It's Saul, David, Solomon. And he asked for wisdom, and God gave it. And, and Solomon had to deal with issues, and Solomon was so close, he rebuilds the temple. He says a powerful prayer. Read that in the previous chapter, 1 Kings 8. I mean, it's amazing stuff. And God even sees Solomon's heart. God sees his heart, but he's going to give Solomon a warning. And here today, God sees our heart, but I want to give you a warning too. Don't think, well, I, I'm, I'm close to God. This is great, wonderful, and, and I've, I've, hit, I've hit the lottery. That's not what it's about. Church, this is just the beginning this is just the beginning of how close we can be to God. And God's going to move mightily. He's going to do great things. I don't want anybody here to be initially blessed and then turn out like King Solomon. It's happening a lot. Like I said, pastors, assistant pastors, youth pastors, deacons, elders, bishops, Sunday school teachers. It's happening all across this country. And then people wonder why. Well, God has a standard. Not that we're not going to make a mistake. Don't get me wrong. But what we do when we make a mistake is very, very important. Had Adam and Eve, I believe, repented initially rather than hide from God, God would have done a little bit different than what he did in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? And I think it's going to be the same way with God. You know, I'm glad God laid on Mary's heart to change things up a little bit, to bring, all, to bring I surrender all in there. Okay, to where we can, to where God can just move and see who's truly ready to go to that place. Who's truly ready to let God just move in every aspect. And I'll tell you what, church, last Sunday night, I was so blessed because I was looking out, whether it was out in a chair, or we had about 45 here last Sunday night, or here at the altar, looking out at folks that said, Lord, you have everything on my plate. Matter of fact, before I eat, I want to give you my plate. That's unselfishness. A couple weeks ago, I preached a message, the narrow way. The broad road, the narrow road. And where I didn't think there'd be five people come to the altar. But there was about 20. Several folks who were taking the broad, talking to them, you know, taking the broad road here or there and said, you know what, I want the narrow way in every aspect of my life. That way, and, I, and, as, that, and as that was taking place, I said, Lord, you're doing something different here. There's something new happening now. You're stirring people's hearts from the inside out. And people are yielding to you. And so here today, I pray that in every aspect of your life, you'll yield to the Lord. Not 50%, not 85%, not even 99%. All 100%. You'll yield to the Lord. Let's break down these verses here today. And just like we talked about with choosing life. God had a plan and purpose for King Solomon. Solomon was not David's oldest son by far. Solomon didn't come along until Bathsheba. Bathsheba is actually Solomon's mother. Most people don't know that, but he is. 
Solomon's way down the chain, but King David saw something different about Solomon, and it was actually David who passed the torch to Solomon. This is why in England they're talking about the Queen Mother, Elizabeth, wanting to skip over her own son Charles and go to William because she's, they're not very close, and Charles has made a lot of blunders. And, and so there she's, But the king, as long as he's alive, has the authority to delegate to what family member he wants to. Now, once he's dead, David couldn't have done that. It would have to go to the oldest son alive. But as long as he was alive, he could make a decree. He could stamp it. And that's how. And, and we, you read that in Scripture, by the way, and, and how, how David chooses Solomon. But here, Solomon had his father's blessing. He had God's blessing. And it all went down the drain. Let's take a look. Verse number 1 of chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord... And the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he wanted to do. Solomon rebuilds the temple. Solomon establishes his throne. It's now Solomon's throne. His father's gone. It's now Solomon's throne. He's the king. Everything's established. It's, it's the way it is. And God's establishing things in our life, too. Some of you are saying, Lord, I give you everything on the plates. God sees that. He sees the true uh, tears of repentance. He sees the desire to pour out our heart unto Him. He sees those things that are established. Those of you still wanting to reach an establishment with the Lord, where there's no better time than the present to do that and to bring everything to the Lord and let Him do great and wonderful things in your life. But here King Solomon was established. And that time had come to pass. Solomon had did what he was asked to do. He was being obedient. And church, that's what's important. Ask yourself this question. Are you obedient to the Lord in all aspects of life? Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself that question because here Solomon was. And maybe you're here and you can say, yes, I'm obedient. That doesn't mean you're out of the woods. That doesn't mean that at all. Some people think, you know, that's how they develop that holier-than-thou attitude. That's not, that's not it at all. You can say, yep, I'm obedient. But that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. That doesn't mean that if you play with fire, you're not going to get burned. And this is what happens. This is what happens to many parents. We tell our kids how to live, but we don't set the example ourselves. And they think, well, everything's all right. Everything's all right. But then that backfires because obedient must be absolute. Obedience must be absolute. It must be consistent. Here Solomon was to this point. Verse number 2, that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time. Now the first time is what I read last week in Gideon. Where God appeared to Solomon in response to his prayer for wisdom. And here the Lord appears to Solomon a second time as he appeared to him at Gideon. And I believe God wants to appear to us too. I've counseled several folks. In the last six weeks, whether it was doing Way of the Master, whether it was a sermon, uh, whether it was a teaching where folks believed wholeheartedly that God had visited them and spoke to them. God's dealing with my heart. God's, it's, I really feel like God's calling me. Things changing. Things happening. And I still believe God's appearing to those, even today, that have a desire to live for God. And an amazing revelation. Here is God appearing to King Solomon a second time. Verse number 3, And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer. Now you can read Solomon's prayer in chapter 8. But here he says, I have heard your prayer and your supplication, which is what we're supposed to do. Make prayers and supplication with all thanksgiving unto the Lord. Solomon was sincere. Now we have to ask ourselves, and I asked this last night to those that came to prayer meeting. We had about 17 here. Praise the Lord. But at prayer meeting, when we go to God, may we go with a sincere heart. Because he sees anything that's not sincere. If you have an attitude of God just being a genie in the bottle, God sees through that. He knows, he knows your heart. He knows your desire. He knows your intent. Okay? Long before you ever ask. So don't try to hide or cover it up from God. But just come to him with a sincerity, as Solomon did here at the beginning of his reign as the third king of Israel. Okay, but God again says in verse 3, And the Lord said to him, referring to Solomon, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. Okay, I have consecrated, which means set apart. I have consecrated, 
and that's a holy set apart. This house, the, the temple which Solomon had built, which you have built to put my name there forever. God heard Solomon's prayer in chapter 8. And he set apart the temple. God has set us apart here. Church, I don't want praise assembly. Oh man, praise assembly. That used to be a happening church. And then five years from now, there ain't nothing happening. You know, we got a lot of churches in this area, and there's hardly anybody in them. The sanctuaries are boarded up, closed up. They're meeting in a small room to conserve heat. Some are meeting in people's homes. Just close the hole, just water, just winterize the house and just meet in a home. But at one point, they were thriving churches. Some places that are now social clubs and social halls were churches where God's word was going forward. Just go to the Rufford Historic Society. They got wonderful pictures. Just places around, or their antique stores, where God's word was going forward and there was people in them. And I firmly believe that it's not because our population's dwindled away. Oh, Pastor Justin, we're a Catholic town. I believe, church, there are souls out there that need to hear the gospel. And if we'll preach the word, God will bring the people here. Think about that, church. I believe that wholeheartedly. But here, God heard Solomon's prayer. He set apart the house. He consecrated it. He was ready to move to where his name was going to reign forever. That's God's intent here at Praise, just like it was with King Solomon, that his name will reign here. This isn't Justin Thacker's church. This isn't, this, that's a bunch of baloney. This is, is Jesus' church. This is, we're about his father's business. This is his father's house. The Lord reigns here. God is moving forth, which is why I desire for us to reverence especially the sanctuary as much as possible because this is the place that's hold, the holy of holies. This is the place where we can chase after God and where God reigns here. That's important to me. But I can tell you, and God has a desire for it to forever be that way. But that can change. Maybe even, I pray not, but if I was to fall, or my successor was to come in and mislead the church, or maybe he fell for the secretary or something. These things are happening, even in the Assemblies of God Church, it's happening all over the place. All over the place. Church is closing up, making more messes. And you would believe the insurance uh, companies having to deal with so much stuff because who's supposed to be responsible for the pulpit? Okay? But here, King David, God, I'm sorry, King Solomon, God says, Solomon, I'm gonna, my name's going to go forever. I'm going to hear and answer this prayer. But when God wants to do that here, you can't say, well, we've arrived. We've got the chairs now. God's blessed us for the building. This is just the beginning. I don't know about you. I'm not content till every soul is one for here in the River Valley for Jesus Christ. And then when we get there, we're going to start tackling the world. There are missionaries that need help. We support like one-tenth of one percent of the missionaries in the Assemblies of God. That's a small percentage. What bother me a bit than just have names of missionaries that we support all the way around this place? Thousands. Then we can say, yeah, we've arrived. Church, we, can't, we, have, we cannot make the mistakes that Solomon made. Because after getting God's blessing, Solomon's going to think, he's arrived. He's arrived. The people adore him. After, especially after, after he, his word of wisdom to the two harlots. After the kingdom was built. People gathered around the temple was built. I'm sorry. People gathered. People supported. They heard the prayer of Solomon. They responded to the prayer of Solomon. But then Solomon would take a different road. Church, our ministry team, praise God for them. But Thursday, we, uh, we were supposed to meet last Thursday, but uh, we, we, we had a few couldn't be there, or one couldn't be there, and it just wasn't going to have a forum and all that stuff. And so we moved it to this Thursday coming up. And the minute we've been praying that folks would respond to the Word and just seek after God and and, and they change, but when, when we review membership's not as easy as you might think. And we and and and, and, and we've been praying that 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 the Lord would just stir people's hearts and that, that we wouldn't have to be the ones to to enforce the standard of God. Because I don't want our kids being misled. 
I'll tell you that right now. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do an injustice to the Word of God. But we have to set a standard. That's part of our responsibility twice a year to do, especially the ministry team. I actually can't. I just make a recommendation. They're the ones that vote. But it's real easy, real easy to start out of the gate well and then go the other direction that quick because we think we've arrived. Church, Christianity is a wonderful relationship where God's forgiveness is a man. He forgives us right on through our walk with the Lord because we still sin. Okay? But we never arrive till we get to heaven. And sanctification is the ongoing process. But a person has to have a desire to live for the Lord. We all make mistakes, don't get me wrong. But it's different when it's a willful mistake and when it's a problem. Okay, and God's going to move Solomon here. It became willful. Then it became a major problem. And then Israel fell apart for 2,800 years until Hitler was raised up to wake up the Jews from his activity. And Israel was reborn again in 1948. Some of you remember that. Solomon's action cost Israel because his son and his servant, Rittaboam and Jeroboam, were out to lunch. They had no idea the righteousness of David, no idea the righteousness of God, and for 2,800 years, Israel would not be a, a unified nation as they are today. But in such a short period of time, in God's blessing, Solomon is going to lose it all. I don't want that to happen to anybody here. Where one activity... You say, Pastor, what's an example of that? Not too long ago, I counseled someone, was close to God, loved God, worshipped God, but they fell for online gambling. And they're losing their whole shirt. House, end up in divorce court, losing everything. Losing, and it happened fast, too. It wasn't just a five-year thing. The gambling got them. And got deeper and deeper and deeper. Then the cover-up got him. What happened to Nixon? The cover-up got Nixon. If he had just said, I'm sorry, you've been all right. What got Lance Armstrong? The cover-up. If he had just come out and said, yeah, I cheated, you've been all right. But the cover-up, because the truth finds itself out, church. It does every time. And that's what's going to happen to Solomon. And I don't want it to happen to you. I want to say, Lord, here I am. I just give it to you. I give it all to you. And I just want, and I want to do this daily, regularly. Die daily to the things of the flesh. And walk in the newness of God. Walk in the newness of the life found in Jesus Christ. That's what I desire here at Praise. And I'll tell you what. We're getting to that point where it may be a small. Jesus only had 12. I'll take 10 people. That love the Lord, heart, soul, mind, and strength. Surrender it all. God's going to take that. A great outpouring of his spirit's going to come. And there's going to be a great revival in this church. And we need to be revived. Yeah. Tell you that right now. We need to be revived. Yeah. Right. I can preach to I'm blue in the face, but until folks receive the word and that revival comes to see, I need to change for the Lord and to bring glory and honor to Him. Verse number 4. I'm sorry, the end of verse 3. And my heart, I'm sorry, and my eyes and my heart will be there Perpetually. Perpetually means for a long time. It does not mean always. I looked it up in three different dictionaries. Perpetually means for a long time. God would know what was in store because he's an all-knowing God. We're going to talk about that tonight. He's all-knowing. He knows who's true and who's putting on the dog. But here God said at the time he was going to answer King David's, or King Solomon's prayer, God was going to move. And he even does it that way today, where ministries get out of the gate wonderfully, churches get out of the gate wonderfully, but then that people say, why did God ever raise that church? Because God had to answer the prayer of that time. If he saw righteousness, God had to answer that and reward that and bless that. God, yes, is all-knowing, but he wasn't going to bring the judgment piece until it got to that point. Verse number four, now, 
if you walk before me as your father David walked. Now David was not perfect. He had an affair with Bathsheba. He sent Bathsheba's husband into uh, Uriah into a place to be killed. He, he made a lot of unwise choices. But he also, though, chased after righteousness. He was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who understood the repentance piece. And God blessed King David, and Israel was its largest proportion than it ever has been in history. Look at a map of Israel under King David's reign. It is huge. Look at it today, the size of New Jersey. Smaller, a little smaller actually, than the state of New Jersey. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart, and, and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. Now if we're to walk, we must walk in integrity. And integrity means admitting we're wrong when we're wrong. Even to God. Say, Lord, I am sorry. I made a mistake. I am wrong. Pride goes before destruction, destruction before the fall. Who said that? King Solomon. But here God said your father walked with integrity of heart. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being terrible, 10 being terrific, are you a person of integrity? Are you the same publicly as well as privately when no one else is looking in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. Jesus would say in the Gospels, if you love me, obey my commandments. If one does not do that, they are not worthy of being my disciple. To all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. That's a promise of God. Some of you here may need a promise from God. That he's going to meet your needs. And God will. Maybe you need a promise from God. Well, Lord, just come to the Lord with that. Say, Lord, I need your favor. But I can tell you the Holy Spirit will convict you to say, okay, you've got to walk in integrity. And you've got to be upright. You can't do the other way. You can't go the lukewarm route. You can't do all this other stuff. Don't fall for this stuff on television. Parent group. Billy and I had a wonderful privilege of our parent group. Encourage any parent to, to come out to parent group, especially those raising children today. I uh, would love to have you out with grandparents. Uh, just come out and share your wisdom for the other parents. If, you're, if you ever had a parent, come on out because you can share wisdom and experiences with our parents. But, but we took a field trip to Walmart Thursday morning, and we wanted to see what our kids were seeing. And Billy and I had the wonderful privilege of walking into the books and magazine section. And that was terrific. That's soft pornography in there. That's all it is. It's disgusting to think. Billy and I would go to the young reader aisle, and there's a book called Under the Shadows, and it's this girl in her birthday suit holding herself. Young reader aisle. Great. Don't send your kids into the Walmart reading magazine aisle unless you're there with them. And guess what, parents of young kiddos? Right in the middle of the adult reader and the young reader, they have the kids. So to get to the kids section, you've got to go through all that garbage to see Dora the Explorer. That's not good, but that's the way it is. Okay? But, but, it's, but then we went over and looked at the Christian section, and there was a lot of Joel Olstein stuff in there. And I was looking at the four cover and all this other stuff and looking at some of the writings and where it talks about not worrying about your faults. That's not what the Bible teaches. Your faults can catch up with you. And you can fall fast. One of the Holy Spirit's jobs is to correct you or rebuke you. To build you up. Convict you. Okay, don't, uh, and I know he's very, and that's all they have there is Joyce Meyer and Joel Olstein and a few Bibles, okay? But let me, at least in that section, they have some others in the choice book section up from in that section. But let me just encourage you. Follow the instruction, the direct words of God. He, de he never said, don't worry about your sin. He said, bring your sin to me. And because of what he did on the cross, I can take that away. So you can be white as snow. Okay, don't get caught up in that stuff. Solomon, could you imagine? What kind of counsel would we give Solomon? If we could go back in a time machine to roughly 900 A.D.C., 
what would that be, 3,000 years ago, oh, Solomon, don't worry about your faults. Oh, yeah? Would that be the counsel we give him? So don't follow what's popular. Just because what's popular doesn't mean it's right. What's right is what's found in the Word. I'll go to my grave declaring that. Okay, what anybody says. What's right is what's found in the Word. And Solomon had instructions. And these are God's direct words, church. God's not beating around the bush. God's not saying, you know, whatever, culture, whatever was going on. Uh, God wasn't saying that. God said, walk according to how David walked, with integrity, with uprightness, following my statutes and my commandments. Verse 5 again, Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. Now, of course, for 2,800 years, there was literally no Israel as was known by King David until now. But then he says, As I promised David your father, saying you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. Here, God remembered the prayer of King David. Because as David was getting older, King David was worried about, because his family was not the Brady Bunch. Absalom was chasing, I mean, David was, he had, I mean, it was pretty radical. And you study, do a search of David's kids. My work. You know, he was married to, first married to Saul's daughter. And, and, and they, David had like, I don't know, what did he have, 30 kids or something like that by several different wives, okay? Solomon being right in the middle of that with Bathsheba, okay? But, but however, however, church, David had prayed that God would bless his throne, or that God's throne, and that there would be mighty men of valor who would be kings of Israel. But David knew God would only do that if whoever was sitting on the throne was a man of integrity who walked with uprightness character. And, but, and so here, as I promised your father, saying you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of, God, on the throne of Israel, which meant God was going to keep that promise, but only if the person on the throne was like King David. You say, Pastor, how can you say that? Well, let's keep reading. Because there's a three-letter word coming up, and everybody knows what it is. But, people think we can have God however we want. I love, that's one thing, I, another part I love about the way the master teaching is, well, that's making a graven image out of God. That's making God into however you want to make him. It doesn't work that way. God takes us as he is, sovereign, and makes us into what he wants us to be. That's how God is. We can't, this isn't Plato where we can take God or Mr. Potato Head and make him look like however we want to. That's not how it rolls with God. Okay, if you want to try that, go ahead, because you're going to be in for a long, long road. Okay, you don't want to go down that. All right, but verse number six, but if you, God gets real personal with Sasha. He doesn't talk about the future to come. He says, but if you or your sons, Rinnebone would be Solomon's son who would become his heir, along with Jeroboam and the kingdoms divided, who was a servant. But if you or your sons at all turn from me, this doesn't sound like don't worry about your problems. Forget about your faults. That doesn't sound like that at all. But if you or your sons at all turn from me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them. Solomon knew what God's words were. Just like our kids know, if you don't clean that room, there's no, you're grounded because it's, maybe it's you giving them three warnings. They said, well, I didn't hear you say that. Yeah, they did. Don't fall for that, parents. Well, maybe they, he had an ear infection, and maybe he didn't hear me. Please, parents, wake up and smell the vultures. Your kids are taking you to the cleaners. Okay? And it should not be that way. Here, Solomon understood. He understood the direct words of God, just like I believe everybody here is understanding me today. I really do, because this is God's words. I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. Okay? About how God is. He's not a big mystery. We study God's word, we find out how he operates really quickly. 
Okay, just like we know our, our spouse's strengths and their weaknesses, they know our strengths and weaknesses because we hang out with them, we spend time with them, we get to know them. It's the same with God. It's not some big mystery. Okay, we understand God, and if you come here every week or Sunday night or whatever, you're going to find out about God. Okay, because we're not bringing in some popular book or we're not bringing in some new fad. We're just getting into the Word and, and, and defining who God is. But he says here, but if you, in verse 6, but if you are your sons at all, at all, he didn't say 50% of the time, 99%, at all, turn from me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, which means they understood what they were, that Solomon had just given this great big prayer back in chapter 8 about, about the, the temple. He understood what was taking place, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight. God, just getting real serious. I know I consecrated it, but I can change that. Why are so many churches closing? Because God said enough. I'm closing them up. God seems so unloving. God's not going to put his name on a church and bless that church that's out doing phony baloney. Forget it. That's not how God operates. Here he says, my own temple. I will no longer consecrate it. I will cast it out of my sight. Why? Because of disobedience and evil. God will continue to bless us as long as our eyes are on him. Tracy, you're going to keep on reporting good news every week. I could come next week, stay in the church address, and be here for about six hours just telling you the blessings of 2012. Yeah, blessing. Yeah, yeah. Take forever. I mean, it take a long time. God blessed us mightily. Not only just material things but, but, and financial things, but with baptisms and salvations and people uh, deliverance. People, I mean, it's God. God did some great things. God will bless. But he says in verse 7, Then I will cut off from Israel the land which I have given them, and this house which I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb, or a wise saying of the past, and a byword among all peoples. I, I travel the area talking to folks all the time. Oh, I remember back when Congress Street was was booming. You couldn't get a parking spot. There were gas stations at each end, a movie theater. This place was booming, all this other stuff, all this other stuff. And it was great. The economy was good. And everybody said kumbaya, but where it happened? What happened? All you have to do is study a little bit of history. In the Protestant realm, we had a couple of churches where the pastor got caught up in embezzlement. Another pastor of one of our churches had an affair. All you got to do is study a little church history. I'm not just up here coming up with the blue. All you got to do is study a little bit. Next thing you know, our church has started emptying out. Emptying out. Our pastors are real discouraged today. We've got to pray that God will anoint them to preach the word and God will fill their auditoriums, fill his sanctuary. Because if not, he's going to close them up. I don't want that, do you? I want the light to keep going forward. However, we can't just take for granted that church has been there and will always be there. We can't take for granted we'll always be here. Are you kidding me? If God's going to take out King Solomon and the church, that, that the temple that he built, he's certainly going to take out. Who do we think we are? God here is serious. He's serious about those that are serious about him and chasing after that. Chasing after that. You know, I pray nobody gets all upset with the ministry team come Thursday night. We've got to make some tough stands. We've got to make some tough decisions. We're tired of robbery in the church. I was so blessed last night where I said, I'm tired of this. What's going on? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. We're in God's house. We've got to lock doors. We've got to watch bags. We've got to consider getting security, uh, video surveillance in here, and all this other stuff. Why? Well, because women's purses are being robbed. Identities being stolen. Even a buddy barrel. Think about this. A kid's buddy barrel. The benevolence can. But we have to look at it and be... Because I tell you what, not only am I responsible, but the ministry team is responsible too. For this very reason. I could check out tonight. Good. I don't know what's going to happen. What's the ministry team going to do? 
I pray they stand for righteousness. If I was to die tonight and you guys had to vote a new pastor in, I pray that you would stand for someone that loves righteousness. God means business, church. He means business. Well, God's a God that understands. Yeah, God understands. That's why he's given us so many invitations. Why do you think he's doing that? He's ready to move. He's ready to do great things. He wants to take away deliver, or addiction. He wants to take away financial problems. He wants to take away homes and chaos. He wants to restore marriages. He wants to, to do all these wonderful things. He's inviting us every single week, it almost seems like, inviting us to yield to him and to surrender to him. In my view, personally, Justin Thacker speaking, sometimes I wonder, Lord, with all the things I counsel, all the things that I help, try to help people with, and all this other stuff, why in the world is prayer meeting not filled with people crying out to God for healing and deliverance? Amen. Why in the world is this altar not filled every week, every sermon, around, around here, people just crying out to God? Well, because they're not receiving the word. Solomon didn't receive it either. Pastor, how do you know Solomon didn't receive it? Because rather than falling for God, he fell for women. And then he fell hard. And then he had a painful life. And not only did Solomon, this is why sin is contagious. Okay, Solomon, he wasn't the only one that suffered. Israel would suffer for 2,800 years because of King Solomon. One man. You don't believe me? Read the history. Study the minor prophets. We studied them here. One man, King David, it was a a luxurious nation, righteous nation. But all it took was one man. Solomon did not receive. He heard, but he did not receive the warning of God. We're almost finished. Verse 8. And, and as for this house, the temple which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss. The house in which praise God, where they brought their sacrifices before God, where they love God, and it was exalted. We've had some great services here. People just worship in the Lord. Sunday night was dynamite. I thought Mary was going to stick to the bench over there. I said, wow, that's like my dad 20 years ago. Just praising God. Worshiping God. But people will pass by and hiss and mumble and wonder what happens. We have a lot of people, church, that pass by us every day. I was down here Thursday getting ready for parent group, and I was just, I was looking out thinking, wow, well, there are a lot of people that walk. A lot of them, yes, are coming from the courthouse, going down to Rumford House of Pizza on break, but it doesn't matter. Doing their business, window shopping, whatever, remembering the good old days, taking their kids for walks, walking their dogs, okay, that walk by. And if we turned our eye from God, think about this, somebody to say, Hey, I remember passing by here and seeing the lights on. Or I remember seeing cars parked out front. What happened? What happened? What happened? Let's heed the warning of God. Everyone passed by and said, and say, why has the Lord done this to this land and to this house? Here's God's judgment. God is a just God. Okay? We can't blame God for the status of the American church or the churches in our area. Even Pentecostal churches, assembly, we can't blame God. God will do all things but fail. Okay? Here's a great question because it is God. It is God that didn't... God said, I will not consecrate my house anymore. I will cast it out, which meant God takes responsibility. It'll be God that either blesses us or curses us. Not us. These blessings that God... This, this is a, 
This is God softening, preparing people's hearts and speaking to them to bless us. It is God that's preparing people's hearts to come in here to church. It is God that's brought you here today. God takes the ownership of the justice piece. But God doesn't do that, though, until he gives us several invitations, as my mother would say, to straighten up and fly right. I heard that so many times. My goodness. She was always talking to Vince. <laughs> Straighten up and fly right. But let me tell you something, church. God, I pray, doesn't have to go to that point to us as a corporate body. Maybe as individuals, of course. There'll be little times. But as far as a corporate body, I pray he never has to say that to us. Because he's just fully blessing. Because we're lifting up the name of Jesus and his word. I know that sounds, well, that's pretty direct. Well, it is. It's not going to be easy. That's what Paul says, you know, die daily, those kind of things. But we have to understand the nature of God and the fact that these are his direct words. And I don't believe God's changed his ways either. I'm not buying that nonsense either. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm tired of new models. I'm tired of try this, try that. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. It was 10 years ago when I came. It still is today. And God's word is marching on. Amen? Amen. 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 Last verse. Verse 10. And this is after, in the end of verse 8, he says, Why has the Lord done this to this land and to this house? Then they will answer. The people will answer. Because they forsook the Lord their God and brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them before the Lord has brought all this calamity, which means disaster, on them. So before God brought the judgment, he gave them an opportunity to get right. God's judgment can be righteous. God's judgment, of course, is righteous in God. But God's, the consequences of God's judgment can be very positive, as we see here. Consequences isn't always a bad word. Suffer the consequences. Well, if you do something good, if you studied hard, you suffer the consequences, you get a nice grade on your test. If you study, now if you chose not to study, you suffer the consequences, then you get a big F or whatever. Or you can be like my brother and never study and stole sumo cum laude, perfect score on everything. That's very few that have that wisdom and knowledge to be able to do that. But he's one of them. Church, God means business with us. You want to know why God means business? Because he's ready to pour out his spirit. I believe that. Come tonight. Sunday nights are different, a little different because it's, it's more informal. You don't, have a, you don't have the announcements, you don't have the program, you don't have this, you don't have that. You just have testimony, worship, and, and sermon, and then respond to God. Powerful. I encourage you to come. Bring the kids. Tomorrow's a holiday. Because God is ready to pour out His Spirit. That's his direct word. That was his direct word to Solomon. <coughs> God actually said the same thing to King David. Jump back into Saul, it's a, uh, 2 Samuel and read 2 Samuel, David's life and how God blessed David as king of Israel. God's promising us the same thing. But I warn you, don't fool around with God. Heed his invitation because he loves you. And if God does bring judgment of some kind, don't get mad at him. Just like a parent lovingly corrects their child because they love him or her, God does the same thing to us because he doesn't want to see what happened to Solomon when he fell off the truck and people suffered his consequences for 2,800 years in Israel. Okay? God wants to wake us up. And he's given us a lot. No one can ever say, how come God never told me? You've heard it here. 
The folks that will be watching on Facebook, they'll know it too. How God operates. Because He loves us. Just like a parent blesses and honors good behavior. Right, parents? Yeah. Your parents, if your kids come home and they did well and they get a four-star or a five-star week, you know, whatever. You honor them if they do positive things. However, unlike some parents that when they do kids do negative things, they say, oh, well, you're a kid, don't worry about it. I'll still go get you a pizza. Yeah, the next thing you know, you're paying for pizza until they're like 70 when you die. But church, heed the warnings of God. And if you do, it's going to be fun. Brandon, last slide, brother. Will you and will we, individual, corporate, keep the commandments of God? Or will you and will we ignore the words of God? What will it be? We're about to find out. Father, we thank you for your word here today. And Lord, your word that you gave to King Solomon 3,000 years ago. First, Lord, we thank you for blessing us in times of righteousness. And Lord, bestowing your grace and mercy to us, even in times like these. Lord, you're a good God who loves us so much. And Lord, it seems like week in and week out, you give us invitation to not only chase after you, but to love you, to get right with you, to duplicate your life. And Lord, for those that are responding, Lord, I'm eternally grateful. Even if it's 10, I'll take it. But 20 would be better. 40 would be awesome. But Lord, those that are hearing your word, and receiving your word, which means they're making changes to their life. They're growing, they're maturing in their faith. I thank you for them. For those, Lord, who have heard the word, but are struggling with receiving it. For whatever reason. Lord, I pray. Lord, I plead before you this morning, that that person or persons, Lord, will finally throw in the towel and surrender. Lord, finally just say, Lord, here I am to worship you. I desire to be a person of integrity, upright character. When I make a mistake, I want to repent and forgive, ask for forgiveness and move on. Lord, you desire us to chase after holiness and righteousness. Lord, if there's someone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior of their life, Lord, I pray that they'll admit that they're a sinner. They need a Savior, Lord. Lord, that they believe that you died on the cross for their sins. Lord, that they're ready to confess you as Lord and Savior of their life. And Jesus, you took things a step further. You called that person publicly to confess you before the brethren so that Jesus, you could confess them and us before our Heavenly Father. So Lord, if there's someone here, maybe come. Lord, if there's someone here today that's fallen away, maybe they fell fast, or maybe they're falling fast right now. They know all too well about how quick you can be close to God in the next moments, a hundred miles away. They know all too fast how King Solomon's life can even be true to someone today that has nowhere near the pressure and strain that King Solomon had as king of Israel. And Lord, that person realizes that you're throwing to them a, a raft to bring them out of the, the deep waters 
Lord, you're giving them that life preserver. And today, Lord, is the, is the Choose Life Sunday. And Lord, if there's someone here who says, I desire to have life and life more abundantly, I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of battling. I'm ready to swallow my pride before it is too late. Lord, may that person or persons come right now. Lord, if there's someone here and they know that this message is for them. Holy Spirit, you're warning them. You're, you're convicting them. You're teaching them that they could very well be on the same path as King Solomon. They were blessed. They had favor. But Lord, they turned away from righteousness. And Lord, you're warning them. Come home. Don't keep going that way. You're going to hit a wall. It's going to be painful. And Lord, may they listen to your voice and obey just as King David obeyed your voice before it was too late. Lord, if for these or any other reason, Lord, you're speaking to a heart right now. Lord, I pray they'll rise and come and seek your face while you may be found. Jesus, and heed your words. Heed your words. Not run from them.